It was a cool, dry night in Arizona when a group of college freshmen ventured into Pepper Sauce Cave to explore a pristine pond deep below ground. On the way down, one woman tried to squeeze through a small hole when her leg got stuck. Terrified, she flailed and screamed as her friends started to panic. Will she make it out alive? This is the story of the Pepper Sauce Cave Rescue. Before we dive into the video, I want to take a moment to thank everyone for subscribing. We've just reached 10,000 subscribers, and it wouldn't have been possible without your support and love. At this moment, most of our popular videos are either from cave exploring or cave diving. We want to broaden our niche, so let us know what other topics you want us to make videos on in comment section. Now, let's get into today's video. Pepper Sauce Cave is a few miles outside of the small town of Oracle near Mount Lemmon in Arizona. It's a desert out here, and the cave's surface is covered with dirt and clay that masks the limestone underneath. Pepper Sauce has fascinated researchers since 1948. Because of Arizona's desert climate, Pepper Sauce Cave is warm year-round with an average temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Moisture from the cave's underground lake keeps the interior humid as hell. Pepper Sauce is only around 100 feet from the road and has an easily accessible entrance. That's enough to lure hikers and thrill-seekers deeper below. Eventually, the entry passage opens into the big room with a vertical drop of about 15 feet. To make research easier, teams installed a metal ladder that descends into the main room of the cave. Nestled below this ledge lies the lake room that has a cave lake that shines brilliant greens and blues in the light. It's this room with its fantastic lake that attracts so many people to pepper sauce. Because of its accessible entrance, warm temperatures, and gorgeous lake, pepper sauce attracts over 20,000 visitors every year. Without the latter, for safety, pepper sauce could have claimed many more accidents and even deaths. At the other end of the lake room, cave researchers installed a second ladder that ascended to a small tunnel called the birthing canal, or the rabbit hole. This passage isn't called the birth canal just because it's narrow. This section is also muddy and slick, and cavers have to climb down this narrow passage head first. A group of a few friends made a weekend trip to Pepper Sauce Cave for fun back in 2009. They easily trekked through the first few sections of the cave, as they walked past creepy, loose string that snaked around the rocks left behind by fellow novices to mark the way out. Notches in the wall away from the lake wafted smells of urine and poop from drunk partiers. Experienced cavers look ahead to map their moves out ahead of time. They get a full picture of the maneuvers and then break it down into smaller movements. That way there's less chance for surprise and danger. This group didn't even think about the consequences of performing advanced cave maneuvers like the birthing canal. The daring girl at the front of the group, who we'll call Sarah, climbed the ladder out of the lake room. At the top of the ledge, she shook her hands to her side, hyping herself up to numb her fears. Without a second thought, she laid down on the slick limestone surface and started to crawl. With considerable effort, she got through the passage. At the other side, she waited for her friends, reassuring them it was easy. The second feature of the cave is fun for most people, cavers or not. Dubbed the slide, this next passage descends further at an angle. This hole is larger than the birthing canal, so most people can go down it. But it's also even more slick. Centuries of water has changed the speleiforms, or rock formations, of the cave. The slide is smooth, with a bumpy or uneven surface, so its angle forces people to literally slide down. An expert might use their arms and legs to slowly descend, but this group wanted the thrill of zipping down in a cave with only their phone flashlights to guide them. One wrong move, and that's a broken phone and no light. The speed of the fall could easily break ankles or smack the back of their heads on the ground, disorienting them, knocking them unconscious, or even cracking open their skulls to soak the stone with their blood. The bottom of the slide opens a few feet above ground in the next room, so cavers have to land on their feet with forward momentum. Explorers with no knowledge of the cave probably won't see the lip from above. They could easily fall forward or backward and land on their spine, 
paralyzing them as their life hangs in the balance deep below the Arizona desert. All of them made it down the slide, with only a few scrapes from exposed skin from badly prepared clothing choices. By now, they were all covered in mud. It got onto their hands, making it hard to grip the already slippery rocks that lay ahead. The next room was what they came here for, the signing room. Half a century of people staking their claim overlapped along the walls with signatures, affirmations that they had conquered pepper sauce. But this tradition was also an act of destruction. Teens and college students, like this group, have been wrecking the cave with graffiti and destructive practices. Vandals used markers and spray paint to draw vulgar phrases and pictures along the walls. Over time, these chemicals have seeped into the groundwater, tainting the once clear lake. Researchers have found E. coli bacteria and bacteria from human waste in the cave's once beautiful lake. Litter has also disrupted the cave's ecosystem. In recent years, more respectful cavers have started leaving notebooks with pens behind to carry on the tradition of the signing room without damaging the cave. Plus, caving teams have spent thousands of dollars sandblasting away graffiti to return the cave to its natural state. Disrespecting caves can be costly for the taxpayers. But these teams were about to learn that if you play games with caves, you will lose. Pushing their luck. The signing room is the last stop for almost all of Pepper Sauce Cave's 20,000 plus visitors. By this point, they've had their fun and have struggled through the dark rocky expanses of the cave enough to turn around. But this room also opens into a labyrinth of passages that extend further down into the cave. Experienced cavers have mapped over a mile of subterranean passageways in Pepper Sauce that could easily trap groups like this one. Crouching in the low-hanging ceilings of the signing room, the group was still excited by the thrill of the adventure. They signed their names, started chatting about which path to take, and debated if they should head back. The lead caver, Sarah, picked a narrow route, and the rest of the group hesitantly agreed. They watched her enter the narrow passage and begin to press deeper into Pepper Sauce Cave. Large rocks jutted out from the sides of the rough passage, forcing them to bend and press their bodies against the jagged walls around them. One by one, they each started to follow her. Their lights couldn't reach to the end of the passage, and each member could barely see over the backs of the people in front of them as they crawled through the mud and stone. One girl in the middle of the group started to have some doubts, and she suggests that they turn back. Sarah didn't respond. She was so focused and intense that all she thought about was the next arm movement, the next leg movement, again and again until she saw something ahead. Panting with sweat that mixed with clay and streaked down her face, she turned around what little space they had and said the next room was just up ahead. They could rest there for a minute and head back. There were problems she didn't mention. The ceiling up ahead curved down while a jagged stone blocked the left side. Immediately past this squeeze, the ground dipped once more, like the birthing canal. It was just as damp here, so the squeeze should be easy. But as she pushed forward, something went wrong. She squeezed forward and felt resistance. Her pants were snagging on the edge of the rock. As she paused, trying to conquer the problem, her group exchanged worried glances from front to back. One of their voices spoke up, reminding her that if it's that challenging, then the return trip might be even harder. Maybe it's best not to push it. The voice had a reassuring, yet shaky tone, concerned but fearful of how Sarah might react if she realized how bad her situation really was. As the words left the mouth of Sarah's friend, she managed to smooth out her pants and jostle her way forward a few more inches, but now she was stuck. She tugged on her leg, it wouldn't budge. She pulled harder, but the rock's edge gripped her clothing and dug into her thigh. With the overhead bulging rock twisting her spine into a weird angle, she couldn't reposition. They asked if she was alright. She let out a fake laugh, trying to remain calm while she struggled for breath in the humid and stagnant air of Pepper Sauce Cave. She asked if they could help her out. The friend behind her started pulling on her leg. The pain immediately caused Sarah to yell for them to stop. 
Instead, they tried adjusting the fabric again. No luck. Next, they tried wiggling the rock free, but it was heavy and they couldn't get any leverage. Plus, gravity was pulling the rock toward the downward slope ahead, and only the ceiling kept it in place. A male in the group suggested that the party switch places. They agreed, and slowly crawled backwards out of this section and back into the signing room. On some days, the popularity of the cave would cause some groups to run into each other here, but this group wouldn't be so lucky. They switched places and began the slow crawl back to her. By the time they got there, Sarah's foot was starting to go numb. Her friend asked if he could pull harder. She agreed to try it, but she would signal to stop if it was too painful. He pulled and twisted his upper body for some small amount of leverage. She wasn't budging. He asked for the others behind him to form a chain. Each of them would grab the ankles of the person in front, and they would pull in unison while Sarah kicked backwards to get some momentum. The maneuver failed. The girl who wanted to turn back earlier broke composure and told them she was starting to really freak out. To make matters worse, the ground and their hands were all wet. Now that should have worked in their favor, but it just made it harder to grip Sarah's shoes and ankles as the young man was pulling. They told Sarah they were going to get help. Sarah had protested a rescue earlier, fearing the embarrassment and blow to her pride. This small glimmer of hope was all that stood between her fun day out with her friends and the grim reality that her fate may rest here in this narrow passage without sunlight, suffering as starvation drained her life away. She agreed. They all started to exit, when she jerked, trying to turn around. The pain jolted through her as she pleaded for one of them to stay behind. One of them agreed, but they would wait in the signing room so they could be out of the way when rescuers arrived. They said, when, still trying to keep a veil between Sarah and the reality of the situation, but they actually meant if the rescuers arrive. Sarah's friends sat with their back against the wall, not knowing what to do. They weren't cavers. They weren't prepared for this life-and-death struggle. They went numb and blank, staring down at the pooled water and muddy stone on the floor of the signing room. The words on the wall blurred together in their peripheral vision. They didn't really even notice, but Sarah continued to struggle. As she pulled, and pushed, and kicked, her muscles kept swelling with blood and lactic acid, which weakened her and drained her chances even more. With eyes wide and full of terror, Sarah realized she needed to conserve her light. She turned off her light as her own heartbeat rose to meet the infinite darkness ahead. As she sat petrified, another thought started to creep in. Since Arizona is dry and doesn't get much rain, the Pepper Sauce Cave Lake usually stays at the same level all year round. But when rain does come through, it can be devastating. The dry dirt of the topsoil above presents no challenge for oncoming rain. The water flows quickly through the ground, and the loose dirt turns to lightweight mud that turns to thick streams below ground. At times, the water level of pepper sauce can rise so high that it starts to pool all along the floor. The cave's convenient entrance creates the perfect trap. The smooth path leading down into the entrance causes water to rise from the exit and from the lake itself. Trapped beyond the lake room, neither of them could see what was happening in the lake or what was up ahead. These further portions of the cave are either unmapped or unknown to the general public. Chances are, spontaneous cave parties like these didn't take the time to fully research the cave. She didn't know if water was up ahead or if it could flow from the other end as well. But she knew that if it did, she wouldn't last long. It was just one more thing to pray for. If rains came, even the best rescuers might not be able to even enter, much less save her. It turns out that this was the same concern rescue crews had. Before Sarah got stuck, while the group was beneath the surface, a storm had brewed and rain began to fall. Soon, she began to hear talking. Behind her, the friend in the signing room saw lights and excitedly told her rescuers were here. Sarah was on the verge of tears, but she wasn't out of hell yet. The rescuers faced the same struggles the young adults faced. 
But the rescue team had better gear, they were stronger, and they had experience and knowledge on their side. After using tools to dislodge the stone, Sarah's leg was free. But blood had been pooling in her head this whole time thanks to the decline in the passage. Hours had gone by since she first got stuck, and she was already tired to begin with. She was unable to crawl backwards. The adrenaline and pain had drained her. The crews attached a harness and tethered it out of the hole into the signing room. With another rescuer from the Oracle Fire Department's technical rescue team, they managed to get her back into the larger rooms. From there, she was loaded onto a stretcher and hauled up through the birthing canal and carefully down the ladder. Rescuers rigged anchors to create a pulley to lift her up the next ladder and out through the cave. After two more hours of rescue work, the cavers were saying that Sarah was rescued. Be prepared and respect the dangers of caves, or they will come back to humble you. This would-be caver was lucky to make it out of Pepper Sauce Cave alive, thanks to the hard work of the Oracle Fire Department and cave rescuers. What would you do if your friend was stuck below ground? Let us know in the comments section. And like the video if you'd make better preparations before exploring the dangerous and dark caves below us. And subscribe for more stories like this one.